to take such huge, giant steps and just try to get to the end of it. It's one step at a time. Matter of fact, there's an old gospel song, one step at a time, Lord Jesus. You see, that's all he's requiring. Just like that little clay dish with that little oil. That's all that lit. And it was enough, just one step at a time. We may not see the whole path at once, but if we walk by faith, hallelujah, and follow the word of God hallelujah. in obedience to the word of God, God will keep us walking in the light. The word of the Lord, hallelujah. Oh, I love this verse. Oh, I love this verse. It's 2 Timothy again, chapter 2. Verse 8, but it's really verse 9. Hallelujah. Brother, come and hold my mic for me. I need, hallelujah. Paul is once again talking to Timothy from prison. He's in chains. His arms and feet are bound. And Paul says to Timothy, I'm suffering as an evildoer. He says, I'm in chains. I'm bound just like an evildoer. Once again, what was his crime? Preaching Jesus. He says, I'm bound. And I believe he probably put his hands up like this. He says, I'm bound. Just like the evildoers, just like the circumstance of everyone else in this place. I'm bound. But the word of God is not bound. Hallelujah. Someone say amen. amen. Someone say amen. 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 Someone get up and do a Holy Ghost Pentecost of Jay. Whoa! <laughs> hey, 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 The word of God is not bound. Hallelujah. You know what? They can lock me up in prison. They can take my Bible. They can throw the key away. But they can't take the word of God from me. Amen. Amen. That's why you got to hide it in your heart. Yes, Lord. You know, in some countries like China, they can't even, it's illegal for them to have a Bible. They, they don't have the privilege of even, many of them don't even have the whole Bible. They've just got little torn rag sheets of pages that they've had to hide and keep secret. But where there's a will, I said where there's a will, Amen. God will make a way. Amen. You know what some of them do? They get a bus and you know, if you ever see the tourist buses in Europe, especially, they're loaded with Chinese. They love to take bus trips. They get a bus and everybody loads on the bus. And the minute they start driving out of the city, everybody takes their little rag-torn little scripture out. And they begin to share it with one another. And they begin to share the word of God. But we have the whole thing. Amen. As of yet, no one has taken our word from us as of yet. We've got the whole thing. But is it just there collecting dust? Or are we putting it in our heart? Hallelujah. We need the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. First Peter verse 23 to 25 it talks that the flower withers and the grass fadeth but the word of the Lord will abide forever I want to tell you the one thing that's never going to go away is the word of God Amen. the word of God will be in heaven with us 
Because Jesus Christ himself became the word. Hallelujah. Everything might fade, fall away. But the word of God is going to abide forever. Hallelujah. The third thing I want to leave with you tonight, it's time to stand up and dress up. It's time to put on Christ. Galatians 3, 27. Or another way of putting it, it's time to be clothed with Christ. What does that mean? To be clothed with a person in the Greek phrase signified the intent of another to enter into the view and intimacy with the one that they're imitating or looking to. To assume the character of Christ as to lift leaves us or gives us an example. Christ gave us an example that we should follow. Put on Christ. Take his character. Jesus did three main things in his ministry, and it's what you and I need to do. They're so simple. Number one, he loved God with all his heart. You know the word God says Jesus, the Son of God, who humbled himself, left his throne of glory, and came to the earth, did nothing without asking the Father. Mm. Think about that. Mm. He loved God so much, he didn't take an assume on himself to do anything without asking God. Mm -hmm. I know so many people who've had gifts and callings and talents, but they refused to submit. They refused to be trained. They refused to be accountable. They refuse, and they don't even take a thought of asking God. And so often they've fallen flat on their face, and nothing's come of them. Jesus did nothing without asking the Father. Secondly, he loved people. Do you love people? Or are they an annoyance? Oh, oh, oh. Do you love people, or are they just a pain in the neck? Do you love people? Are you willing to invest yourself in people? Because that's what the church is really called to do. That's our main mission. Most people think, well, I got saved to get to heaven. Woo-hoo-hoo, I got saved to get to heaven. I got say I'm saved, and I know that I am. I'm saved. And going to heaven. Most people just, they're so happy they're going to heaven. Hmm. I, got, I got some news for you. If the only reason you got saved was to get to heaven, I know the day. I know the hour, I know the moment, and I know the year I got saved. December 31st at 11.58 p.m., two minutes before 1974. Can I tell you something as much as I can in a loving manner? That if my only purpose was to get saved, to get to heaven, Jesus could have taken me out in those two minutes, and I could have been in heaven for 1974, and I wouldn't have had to go through all these years. You know, most people, everything stops at salvation. I'm saved. I'm saved. And we have a tendency to forget real fast what he saved us from. And we forget real fast that someone was used to bring us to the gospel. Yes. Very rarely is someone just such a divine uh, visitation from Jesus that they get saved without another human being. The majority of the time, God uses another human being to be a witness to another human being. Matter of fact, that's one of your main purposes other than getting saved is to be a witness. Preach, brother, to them. Oh, yeah. Good. We're waking up now. We're just going. Okay. Hallelujah. 
And then from loving people, you're going to do what's automatically the next step. Serving people. Good God. Yes. Just serving. Just serving. In our dressing up and in our putting on Christ in Isaiah 61,